हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सुशांत श्रीवास्तव अ सीनियर रेसिडेंट एट पंडित मदन मोहन मालवीय शताब्दी हॉस्पिटल गोवंडी मुंबई एंड आई एम हियर टू डिस्कस विथ यू अबाउट प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस ऑल्सो नोन एज पी ओ पी देर इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी एज टू हाउ द नेम प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस केम थ्रू द नेम प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस इज डिराइव फ्रॉम एन एक्सीडेंट टू अ हाउस बिल्ट ऑन अ डिपॉजिट ऑफ जिप्सम नियर पैरिस सो वॉट हैपन वॉज द हाउस was burned down and when rain fell on it there was baked mud on the floor which was noticed as the footprints which was found on it now plaster of paris was first introduced by pirogov from russia and it was brought into use by matheson a dutch military surgeon so both these people were the pioneers or the first people to use plaster of paris now pop consists of a roll of muslin which is stiffened by dextrose or starch and is impregnated with the hemihydrate of calcium sulfate so when the hemihydrate of calcium sulfate and water they combine together they give rise to calcium sulfate dot 2h2o and heat so whenever we see the pop being put inside the water taken out and then applied as a slab or a cast we get heat outside so this is a exothermic reaction talking about pop we need to know a few things about some basics setting time and drying time setting time is the time taken to change from powder form to crystalline form the drying time is the time taken to change from the crystalline form to the anhydrous form the average setting time is 3 to 9 minutes and the average drying time is 24 to 72 hours when we talk about pop the most important thing which we need to understand are the factors which affect the setting time factors increasing the setting time is cold water and sugar so we normally don't use sugar but we always see the orthopedic surgeons or the jrs or the mamas using cold water instead of lukewarm water to increase the setting time and the factors which decrease the setting time are hot water salt borax and resin the orthopedic uses of pop are as follows one which we all know support the fractured fragments and rest the damaging bones which in turn helps to control the movement of the tissues it is used to stabilize and rest joints in ligamentous injury to support and immobilize joints and limbs post operatively until the healing occurs to correct a deformity to ensure the rest of infected tissues and to make a negative mold of a part of a body there are two basic forms of pop one is a slab another is a cast so slab is a type of pop which is a supportive structure which is only a part of the circumference of the limb so it incorporates or it supports only a part of the limb and cast is a type of pop which encircles the whole circumference of the limb now what are the advantages of applying a pop pop are cost effective they are non allergic and they are easily molded to different forms the disadvantages are they are radio opaque so they may occlude the fracture lines they are heavy and they easily break when they come in water contact the rules of applying a pop cast now the most important rule is enough padding or i should say optimum padding so the padding is placed from the distal to the proximal part with a 50% overlap minimum of two layers are required and extra padding is necessary at bony prominences like the fibular head malleolus patella and olecranon process now we as we all know that the cold water will maximize the molding time so we use cold water and the thumb rule for using the type of pop for a particular area in the body is 8 inches width for thigh 6 inches width for leg 
and 4 inches width for the arm and forearm. Now there can be a confusion. 6 inches can also be used for lower limb as a thumb rule and 4 inches for upper limb. In cases of POP cast, one should always remember to apply it one joint above and one joint below. We need to mold it with palm and not with fingers as using fingers may indent it. Joints should be immobilized in a functional position. The cast should not be too tight or too loose. It should have adequate padding and the correct word over here would be it should be snugly fitting. We need to dip the POP vertically in water till the air bubble ceases to come out and uniform thickness of plaster is always preferred. What do you mean by a good padded plaster cast? A layer of cotton wool padding. The elastic pressure of the cotton wool enhances the fixation of the limb because this compensates any shrinkage in the tissue. We all know whenever there is a fracture, there is going to be some amount of edema or swelling which will go away. So this cotton, the elastic pressure of the cotton padding which we use, it compensates for any shrinkage in the tissue and after that we can apply the plaster bandage. This is meant as a well padded plaster cast. While applying any plaster, we need to remember the triple sequence. Phase 1 is the examination and the rehearsal. Phase 2 is the normal plastering which includes cotton wool or the padding application with the plaster bandage. And phase 3 is the reduction and the holding of the cast. Now while applying the plastering, the limb should be held by the assistant in position of the approximate reduction. The surgeon should himself apply the padding and also the plaster bandage. Quick application of the plaster bandage is important so that the precise holding of the reduction is maintained and plastering should be done completely while it's soft and finishing touches should be given at that time as well. Now, what do you mean by the reduction and the holding? After applying sufficient amount of plaster, the surgeon prepares to apply the rehearsed movement of reduction again and he should be able to recognize that clicking sound of reduction. After applying the rehearsed reduction, the surgeon holds on and without further any movement allows the cast to set in. In the last few minutes which are remaining, the surgeon should obliterate any abrupt impression or any indentation which may be there so as to prevent any pressure shear. One of the basic and gold standard rules after applying a slab or a cast is one should not forget to take an x-ray. An x-ray should always be done after the application of a cast to confirm the acceptability of the reduction which we have achieved. There are certain errors in applying a padded plaster. When you attempt to plaster at the same time as to holding a precise reduction, when you've carelessly applied the wool, whereas it has become a shapeless lump, there are loose bandaging all around, there is a Wellington boot effect, and failing to recognize the sensation of reduction through the plaster. We need to remember that if there is not significant or adequate amount of padding, there is always a chance of injury or compartment syndrome due to cast. Now windowed plasters are not usually encouraged. What do you mean by windowed plaster? So what we actually do is after applying a cast, we make a small window and this window is actually used to aid dressing of any open wound in cases of any compound fracture. Also, in cases of compound fractures where you have used a skin graft, a dressing for that as well requires a windowed plaster. There are a set of instructions given to the patient every time a plaster of Paris is applied as a slab or a cast. 
The patient needs to come to the emergency immediately if there is excessive pain, swelling, bluish or whitish discoloration of the fingers or toe. One needs to keep the plaster cast dry at all times. Mobilization of all the joints which are not incorporated in the plaster, that is, the ones which are out of the plaster, should be maintained or continued always. If one notices any crack or cuts in the plaster, the plaster has become loose or shaky and there is no proper hold, one should immediately visit the emergency, consult the doctor and get it removed and replaced again. There should be a graduated wear weight bearing for lower limb fractures. This is very important because first there is equal amount of edema or swelling which comes off and then the graduated weight bearing can be started. The complications of plaster of Paris, especially due to a tight cast are pain, pressure sores, compartment syndrome, peripheral nerve injuries, an unrelenting pain which was out of proportion to the fracture. There can be stretch pain which is one of the cardinal signs of compartment syndrome, hypoesthesia, bluish and whitish discoloration of the digits. Complications due to improper applications include a joint stiffness, plaster blisters and sores, and breakage of plasters. Due to plaster allergy, the patient can have or complain of allergic dermatitis. To remove a plaster cast, one needs a very good plaster spreader and electric saw. So what happens is, using the electric saw, you made a cut longitudinally over the plaster cast and using the spreader, you spread the edges. After that, using some pressure, you remove it. One also needs a sharp, good blade to cut through the padding. So to summarize, the POP bandage is a hemihydrate of calcium sulphate. When it comes in contact with water, it gives rise to calcium sulphate and heat. This complete thing is an exothermic reaction. POP is used to support and stabilize the fractured bone and immobilize the joint. Complications due to a tight cast are pain, pressure sores, compartment syndrome and peripheral nerve injuries. Uh, these are the references from which this presentation was made. For any added reading, you can consult Traction and Orthopedic Appliances by John Stewart and Close Treatment of Common Fractures by John Chandler. The two books which I was talking about and wishing you the very best. Thank you.